So I think one of the main reasons why I started this video series, or at least I want to start a language learning video series is because I don't see, I don't really see a lot of videos about sort of measurable progress when it comes to people learning their target language. And like nobody really talks about what they did specifically to get to the level that they're at and how long it sort of took them to get there. But the thing is, I think another thing is, is that it's kind of really hard to measure somebody's language ability. I think the most specific sort of reliable standard we have right now is the European framework when it goes from A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2, C2 being the most advanced. And like when a lot of people do their language learning videos, they just say, okay, just, you know, listen a lot speak a lot and you will get there eventually, which, you know, that is good advice. But a lot of people don't really like hearing the word eventually though. I definitely don't like hearing it. Like I do like to have a sort of time frame. like what do I need to do to get to this kind of level? What do I need to do every day to improve my listening ability or my speaking ability from this level to the level that I want? Because like when I sort of have that sort of frame of reference, it is easier to motivate myself to keep going. Unfortunately, especially when it came to learning Chinese, I have no frame of reference. So really it was just like, okay, I know I'm improving, but I don't know how good I am right now. And I know that I'm still not fluent. So that just means I have to keep going. So I think that was the main point when it came to my learning Korean in two weeks. How much can I learn within two weeks? What kind of level would I get to? And I was kind of hoping that I would get from A1 to A2 within those two weeks. And I don't think I really did, honestly. Um, like, I, it's not really even possible for me to have a flowing conversation with people right now with the current Korean that I know right now. But does that mean that what I did was a failure though? And honestly, I don't think so. Because the one most important thing that I got from this was that I just needed to keep learning. I just needed to force myself to keep learning, which was something that I didn't really do the first time I tried studying Korean. And I can feel a lot better during my second time in Korea because I know that I actually did improve which was not something that I felt my first time going to Korea. So like the best thing I can take away from this two week experience is that I know what I need to do more in order to keep improving. So I don't think like there were some things that I probably could have done better to get to the level that I want. For one thing, um, the one thing that I did do, which is what I did when I started improving a lot better in Chinese, was I could find a teacher with to practice on a consistent basis. Unfortunately, I don't think I found the proper, like the suitable teacher for me, I think. With my Chinese teacher, she's really good at keeping the conversation in Chinese. And she's also really good at keeping the conversation going in Chinese, even if we run out, even if we run out of things to say on a topic, she's really good at changing to another topic or saying interesting things about the current topic to keep the conversation going. My Korean teacher wasn't too great at that. Not that she didn't help me though. Our, our class was just her encouraging me, encouraging me to speak as much as possible, which I did. And I did find myself being able to say a lot of things that I didn't know I was able to say at all, especially my first time studying Korean. I found out that I could use, even with the limited words that I know, I can still express a lot of things. Unfortunately, when it comes to languages and when it comes to conversations, it's a two-way street, right? So. Like I, maybe I can say something and the next person can say something too. And it is incredibly important for me to understand what the other person says in order to keep the conversation going. Otherwise it's, it's going to be a really, um, 
tedious conversation, especially for the native speaker, when you realize that the person keeps talking without really understanding what the person is saying to him. And I have been in situations like that. And I also kind of wonder if I was that person too in some conversations in the language that I'm learning. I didn't get to that point with Korean though. Um, so I think that didn't help me quite a bit, but the one thing I am glad about is that I can speak a lot more in Korean than I could the first time I tried studying it. So I don't think this was a failure. I don't think this was a waste of time. I'm, I'm glad that I was able to do this. I'm glad I had this experience. I didn't really have that much of a chance to have conversations in Korean and Korea, really. Um, like, I, I did try to speak a little bit to this one person, and he was just surprised that he could actually understand what I was saying. Which, you know, that that's almost kind of feels like a backhanded compliment to me. Especially after seeing another white guy speak Korean. And he, he spoke it really well too. And like if and if the standard is being surprised that you can understand somebody when a white person tries to speak Korean, that, that that's that's not really a high standard. But anyway, um I think I'll try to get back on Korean again after I feel comfortable enough with Chinese. And honestly, I don't know when that will happen, but maybe soon, maybe not soon. But I think from now on, I think I might take a break from Korean now, but I am glad that I took some time to study it again. But from now on, I think if I make any more videos like this, it's probably going to be about my experience learning Chinese. So that's about it. Thanks.